Hi friends, this is Hannah from Hannah B. Flute. It's been a while since I had made a video, but I would like to get back into it and see how things go, no promises, but hopefully you'll stick around and see what videos I make. If I don't end up making videos, you can always visit me at hannahbflute.com where I do blog every week. And you can also visit piccoloperfection.com where I blog specifically about the piccolo. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is self-care tips for musicians. So of course, self-care, taking care of yourself is important no matter who you are, no matter what you do. But I feel like, especially as classical musicians, there's this like expectation that you're always on. You're always practicing. You're always like, heading to or from a gig, you're always heading to or from lessons, either that you teach or that you're taking as a student. There's not really like, I guess, time or the excuse to, um, or the ability, not excuse, because self taking care of yourself is not an excuse for not doing something. It is important. You should take care of yourself. Don't, you don't want to let yourself go as they say. So, my first tip is to get enough sleep. This is so important uh, if, because if you don't sleep, you're not going to feel good. You're going to feel tired all day. I know when I don't get enough sleep, I feel really tired the next day and it just, I don't want to practice. I don't want to, you know, do anything really until I take a nap or otherwise I'm able to get that energy back with like caffeine or something. Um, so of course some people now, from what I've heard, some people need more sleep than others. I find I need at least eight, eight and a half hours to feel good. Some can be, get by with like as little as seven hours. So figure out your rhythm, figure out what works for you. Um, and then, you know, try to find a time that makes sense for you to go to bed and to wake up each day. Of course, depending on what you do as a musician, you know, you may have a late night gig or a late night of teaching one night, but then you might have to wake up early, like the next day or like the day after. So it's not always possible, but if it is, if you have, you know, if you work like the same hours every day or every week, try to go to bed around the same time so that your body gets into that rhythm and your body will understand, okay, it's like, you know, 10, 30, 11, it's time to go to bed now. Um, so yeah, it can also help to, you know, get a new bed if you're, if you suffer from like back pain after you wake up, you can also get a new pillow, a new pillowcase. I will link my silk pillowcase in the description box below if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, just have a comfortable bed, have a comfortable pillow, you know, try and cool your room down. So turn on a fan or the air conditioning course since we are approaching winter at least in the northern hemisphere it can be hard to you know turn on the AC when you're gonna be cold throughout the day so a fan is nice um, but yeah just make it as comfortable as possible so that you can get some good sleep so my next tip is to eat a healthy diet this is much easier said than done especially for someone like me who loves junk food um, but try to eat, you know, fruits, veggies, lean meats, uh, if you like meat, if you're vegetarian or vegan, good for you. Just, you know, stick to the fruits, veggies, nuts and seeds, um, you know, maybe a little bit of dairy if you are vegetarian, um, or if you're not, you know, you could have a little bit of cheese or something, um. But, you know, eating well will give you a bit more energy. I know it does for me. And I know my body definitely feels better after I eat like fruits and veggies, for example. It may not seem like self-care to do that, but, you know, especially if you're in school and relying on, you know, a cafeteria. I know in my undergrad, the cafeteria sucked. There was not a ton of options. Um, there was a salad bar. Uh, but as far as like healthy food goes, that was about it. There were some, occasionally there were vegetarian or other healthy options, but yeah. So, you know, 
Maybe you go to the grocery store and get some apples that are easy enough to eat in your dorm if you're in college. If you're in, if you have an apartment or if you're in a house, of course it's easier. You can get stuff that you can cook yourself. Um, but yeah, so find some healthy foods that you enjoy and incorporate those into your diet. Um, along with that, drink more water or drink enough water, I should say, um, to, you know, help yourself feel better. Uh, I've heard that water can help your skin look and feel better as well, but just drinking water in general can help. Um, I know sometimes I get headaches if I am dehydrated and that's not fun. So drink water. Um, I'll keep a water bottle on my desk right here. I guess it'd be like right here, so just off um, frame. But yeah, so that way when I'm working, I have an easy excuse to just reach over, grab some water, sip it, and then I don't have to take a huge break, go downstairs, go to the kitchen, get a glass of water. Just, yeah. Um, so yeah, drink some water throughout the day. Have a water bottle with you, have a water bottle you know, when you're driving, especially long distances, and make it one that you can open one-handed so that you don't have to take both hands off the wheel. Um, <clears throat> then take a bath. That's another way I like to practice self-care. Um, I like to just, just use warm water. Some people I know like to use, you know, bath salts or bath bombs, but yeah, just warm water. You can sit in it. Yes, it is technically you're sitting in your own filth. Um, and it's kind of gross, but it can be a good way to relax. Warm water can sometimes feel really good, especially in the winter when, when it's cold. Uh, I know my feet get cold very easily, so sometimes the water feels good on, the, on my feet. Um, yeah, just take a bath at the end of a long day or a long week. Um, another one of my favorite ways to practice self-care is to watch a show or a movie or even just YouTube. Um, you know, if I'll figure out, okay, do I want to watch comedy or drama? Do I want to watch, you know, like a half hour show or do I have time to watch a longer movie? Um, uh, and then I'll figure out what I want to watch from there. And, you know, you can obviously get into a series and then, you know, you'll have something that you can continuously watch. Um, my next tip is to spend time with your loved ones. So family, friends, your partner, uh, even your pets, if you have pets. Um, so sometimes I'll do something as small as just like eating with someone, eating a meal together or, you know, taking my dogs on a walk with my family or it could be as big as like spending the entire day together doing something. So yeah, think about what you and your family all like to do and then do that together. Um, that could be a great way to take a break from music, especially if all or some of your family and friends aren't musicians. You can kind of get out of the like music bubble that we have. Um, Speaking of getting out of the music bubble, pursue a hobby. Figure out what you like doing outside of music. I like learning foreign languages, so I use an app called Link, L-I-N-G-Q, to learn languages. I've been using it for Spanish and Italian. I think they have like a dozen or more languages available. Uh, it does cost money, but it's worth it, I think because it, you learn by reading and you learn by actually reading like real stuff rather than the random Duolingo sentences that are like, I like apples or which that is a real sentence, but you know, it's actual short stories and yeah. So, um, yeah, you, maybe you like cooking or you like doing puzzles or something, find a non music hobby that you just do for fun and that you don't try and monetize because it can be tempting to do that, especially with the world we're in. Um, the next thing I kind of touched on this, but take a walk. Uh, I'll walk the dogs with my family or on my own. 
Um, taking a walk can be a great way to get outside. If you're at school practicing, you can walk around the hallways, you can walk around the music building itself if it's not too cold or too hot. But yeah, just getting out of your practice space, getting out of your element and getting some fresh air, some good, you know, yeah, air, sun, whatever. Uh, can be a great thing, especially if you're working from home. You know, I hardly ever get outside if it's not for a walk, which is kind of sad, but yeah, going for a walk is a great way for me to practice self-care. So then my last tip, number nine, is to turn off screens. So turn off your phone, turn off your iPad. It's my iPad back there. Turn off your laptop, your TV, whatever. Um, and just, you know, again, you can hang out with your family, you could hang out with a friend, you could go on a walk, you could pursue a hobby that doesn't involve technology, like sometimes I enjoy knitting, um, maybe you like painting or drawing or whatever, so you can spend, you know, a few minutes to like half an hour or more, you know, without using a screen, as much as I love and, uh, have talked about using an iPad for sheet music. Sometimes it's nice to just use paper because then I'm not staring at, you know, backlit screen all day. Um, of course that, you know, does mean you have to carry more sheet music around, but if you're practicing at home and you have all your sheet music, you know, maybe take a break from using your iPad and just use the written, the printed version. Um, yeah, so those are my tips for how to practice self-care as a musician. Um, I try and do all of them pretty regularly. Screens, turning off the screens one I'm not as good at. Um, but yeah, so give yourself a break from music and then you can come back to your next practice session feeling refreshed, feeling more you know motivated and ready to go. So... If you like this video give it a like and if you want to see more videos from me please subscribe i would love to have you and i will talk to you guys soon